All right. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to uh, the Supernatural Entrepreneur Unpacked. And you know what? I was supposed to go. They told me to stream this to Facebook. So I'm about to try to do that real quick and see if it will let me do it um, <laughs> real quick. And then I'm going to start. I'm going to have to cut that out in the, uh, in the replay. All right. Now, now I believe we are good to go. Okay. So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for jumping on this pop-up session. I'm going to be talking about the Supernatural Entrepreneur Unpacked uh, Five Biblical Principles to Build Your Business with God. And I'm really excited. This should only last about an hour, okay? So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and take some notes because we are about to go in. I'm gonna pray us in and then get started. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for each and every soul, each and every entrepreneur that is on here live with us today, Lord. I pray that that there is something that is shared that transforms and shifts them to greater. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for our sins so that we can have power to the, to the access of the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this Zoom. I have an agenda, but Holy Spirit, you are my leader. You are my guide. I submit to your authority uh, under God. And I am thankful. So if you want to shift this, this, this space, I totally welcome you, Holy Spirit. Um, I step into my authority as God's prophet. And I am thankful and honored for the opportunity to, to become before your people. Lord, may something resonate with the hearts and minds. Give us ears to hear and a heart to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Okay, guys. So let me go ahead and get started. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Chanel E. Martin, and uh, I am the founder of Beyond the Book Media. Shout out to my Beyond the Book Media uh, family squad. And I'm also the co-founder of Kingdom Business Network. And I wanted to do a pop-up, just kind of like talk training session on the Supernatural Entrepreneur Unpacked five biblical principles to build your business with God. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that I have a whole book on this, uh, which really breaks down a lot of these concepts. So I'm using this as a guide and we're going to have a discussion, okay? So how many of you have really noticed that there's just been a shift? You feel it. It could be good or bad. I'm just curious. Let me know in the comments if you've just, you felt the season change. And me and a friend, we were talking and I was like, I feel the season has changed. And y'all, I am not a doom and gloom prophet. I actually think, I think there are things that are happening that are bad, right? We're in war. We heard that Dubai is underwater, but I believe that God is positioning many of us to be the leaders, to be the influencers, right? He's, it, um, he's giving many of us wealth. And so a lot of you have a greater call. You have a greater call. There is even another level of, of burden that has been arrested upon you, especially for business and entrepreneurship. I also believe that God is shifting many of you. So whatever you were doing last year and the year before that, it's no longer working because God needs you to shift, okay? And so there are just some basic principles that I wanna go through and I'm not even gonna call them basic because oftentimes we say something is basic, it, it, it equates to, it might be elementary, but I wanna go through some of these principles um, that I have in, our, in my book and and then we're going to have a discussion um, because I want to make sure that foundationally we understand the time and the season that we're in. So, for example, if I just said that the season has shifted and many of you have said that you have felt that. And if I just said that God is positioning many of you in a place of influence, he's getting ready to um, slingshot many of you into a place of extreme wealth. 
what some of you are getting ready to walk into, you have never seen. And I just feel that so strongly. And, and it's not for your own personal gain. It's not for your own, so you can go take trips around the world. It is because God has need of you. And so you are going to really have to be disciplined and tapped in if you want to have access to what God is giving and delivering um, and releasing in this season. So I'm going to go through point number one. And if at any moment, y'all, because this is interactive, this is not formal. If you have questions, you can um, drop them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer. So I said I was going to go through five. We're going to start with uh, principle number one. Okay, y'all. And, and I feel really bad. And if I if I ruffle your feathers, uh, we, we, can, we can fight about it later. Okay. If I ruffle your feathers, we can fight about it later. Okay. <laughs> the first principle I'm about to tell you, and, and, and many of you, if you've been following me for any length of time, you have heard me mention this. But the first principle that I want to kind of talk through really quickly to make sure that we are not doing, y'all, we are not to do anything scared. Don't do anything scared. Do it in faith. Okay. So what has happened, and I and I even saw um, I've been seeing some people still talking about do it scared, do it scared, do it scared. As long as you do it, do it scared. No, we are not to do anything afraid. Okay, who over here want to fight me? Because you got a whole t-shirt line. Uh, You got a whole, you done built a whole brand. Well, I did mine scared. All right, so let me tell you what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to pull on faith and not fear. Okay. So really quickly, y'all know this for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but power, love, and self-discipline. Look, we can laugh. Cause I'm going to be, I'm going to make you laugh up in here. We're going to, we're going to have a good time. Okay. God has not given us a spirit of fear. If God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? And we're saying we're doing business with God. Look, I'm talking to the Christian entrepreneur. We're saying we're doing business with God. But God ain't gave us fear. Okay? So where did fear come from? Fear came from hell. Fear, fear is from the enemy. God has never said to anyone biblically, hey, Joseph. Do it scared. Hey, Noah, build the ark in fear. Hey, Mary, go be afraid while you are carrying. No, he has told everyone. There's two sentences, two words that are often stringed together over and over and over in the word of God. He says, for God has, he says, for, for I'm going to give you first Chronicles 28 and 20, but then you'll see this phrase over and over. Then David continued, be strong and courageous and fear not. That's two, but be strong and courageous. Right. Do. And then he'll say, do not be afraid. So strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. I'm going to read it. Then David continued, be strong and courageous and do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God, my God is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. He will see it that all the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. So we are not to do anything afraid. So if you have, if you have put fear and professed fear and worn fear as a badge of honor, Right. We're going to come out of agreement with that right now. All right. I'm about to just say a prayer. We're going to repent for, for professing that we are doing stuff with hell. We are, we are doing stuff with the devil. I don't care what you say. You argue with the Bible if you want to. I had, I was telling folks to do stuff afraid. I was telling people to do things in fear and the Lord corrected me. So we're about to pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. 
I thank you just for a revelation of your word and your wisdom. Lord, we come out of agreement with any covenants that we have made with fear, of, with fear concerning our business, concerning our purposes. Lord, we pull on the spirit of faith. Lord, your word instructs us to be strong and courageous and to not be afraid. And today, Lord, we are walking in the power of the blood of Jesus that gives us access to strength and courage. We curse every spirit of fear that is connected with our purpose. We sever it by the power and authority of the blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, that every place that fear once had a, a, a stronghold, once had a guiding light, once had influence, that it is now filled with faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Woo! Y'all know what some of that, some, some of y'all, that just shifted y'all whole business, okay? All right, so I got to move to the next thing. I got to move to the next thing. Okay, I want to say this. This is, why it's, this is why you have to pray the word of God because there are some people that are your favorite influencers that are that are Christian and they love the Lord. But a lot of times, sometimes we pray from our soul and our soul is afraid. So if we're like, okay, so we just gonna do God, I'm gonna do it afraid. I'm gonna do it with you. And that is not what the word of God says. So my suggestion for you, as you develop your prayer strategy, that you start praying the word and not praying what you heard, okay? Start praying the word and not pray what you heard because we don't know if what somebody else came out their mouth is even biblically sound. What else came out their mouth is even biblically sound. So, we just, so, we just, I don't know what's going on, but we're going, there we go. There we go. We're going to press mute here, there. All right. Amen. Okay. So, let me move on to point <laughs> number two. All right, look, I'm about to take, I'm thirsty. I'm about to text my husband to bring me some water. <laughs> Can you bring me some water? All right, perfect. So let me go on to, um, <laughs> look, sometimes you need to hear it twice. I guess that's what it was, right? The Lord said, you didn't get it that time. You're going to hear it again. All right, so the next part, the next pr principle that I wanted to go through, all right, principle number two, your faith matters, your feelings don't. And I'm going to tell you, this catches a lot of us up because a lot of times we will only go, go as far as our feelings will take us. Ooh, then I, my coming, whose street don't come down? You will only do as much as you feel like. So God may have positioned you or God may have something for you that's on the other side of what you feel like, okay? So you have to come out of being guided, right? It says, in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. You will, you will quote that scripture, but then when God says, get up, go here, go call this person, go invest here, you will say, I don't feel like it. How many times has your I don't feel like it uh, pushed you out of purpose and out of the will of God simply because you didn't feel like it? And I'm not even talking about like the feelings from like a perspective of you tired. I'm talking about many of you mentally don't feel like it. God, I'm so exhausted. God, I don't understand. I don't feel like it. And maybe you haven't said it, but it's a lot of things that you haven't done simply because you ain't felt like it. And so I'm telling you the minute that you can master moving beyond how you feel, that is going to be super important. You are going to have to master your habits beyond your feelings. You are going to have to have the faith to move beyond. Okay. So you have to, we have to learn how to practice consistency. And I believe that that's where a lot of us miss the mark is we start stuff I'm included, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not excluding myself. We start stuff and then we stop it because we don't feel like it. We stop it because life happens. We stop it because insert any, probably a really good excuse. But can I tell you a little secret? Your feelings do not exempt you out of your purpose. Your feelings and what you feel like does not, are y'all ready for this? Stop hell from attacking you. 
Oh God. Your feelings and what you feel like does not release you from your assignment. Can I tell you something? Many of you are trying to figure out the warfare that you have, but you are not allowing your angels to guide. You are not allowing yourself to be guided. You are not in the, in the will of God. So you don't even have access to the protection that is uh, designed as you are in purpose. You don't have access to the resources that are made available to you as you are moving through things. So you trying to figure out why hell fighting you. You're like, I don't know what's going on. And it's because you have not picked up your armor that is available to you on the way. So some of you are going through warfare and you ain't even did nothing. You're like, I don't even know what's going on. This is the warfare for your purpose. This is the warfare connected to your destiny. This is the warfare connected to the call of God on your life. This is the warfare to make sure that you keep not feeling like it. Okay. Okay. Y'all got me. Y'all got me. So um, here's just, I, I want to, I want to share something that I think can help you practice being consistent. Find one thing that's really hard that you know you're supposed to do and make it a non-negotiable and give yourself 30 days to do that thing. And if you can overcome that thing, right? You can apply the faith that you use to conquer that to move on to the next. So anybody feel like sharing in the comments, what's one thing that you know you're supposed to do and you can commit to being consistent in? Because you you want what else, you want whatever else God got for you too. Anybody want to share? Just drop it in the comments. I'm curious. All right. Luana says ministry. Who else got something that they're supposed to be consistent in? Resting. Come on, Marina. Look, rest is a posture. Resting is a posture. Encouraging. Lakeisha said, okay, keep them coming. I want you to spend 30 days. 30 days doing the thing that you don't feel like doing. And watch how God transformed you. Watch how God moves in your behalf. I bet you so much stuff is going to break just by you doing that. You can't be honest, Marquisha. You're supposed to do this woman at the well thing, but ain't nobody. Uh -uh. But look, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Y'all, you are going to have to manage what God has for you, you're not going to feel like it. I'm going to tell you why you're not going to feel like it. You're not going to feel like it because you cannot do it in your own strength, within your own power. This, some things come by fasting and prayer. Some things come by consecration. Some things come by getting in God's face and saying, God, I, I, I know you are calling me to do this. One of the things that God has called me to do is really be intentional about my fitness. And I, every time I will start and then I will stop. I will start and then I will stop. And I made the commitment that if I'm going to be out here, prophetess to the nations, if God's going to be sending me on flights, if I'm going to be airport hopping, if I'm going to be speaking, you ever try, you, you, y'all, any of y'all speak on the stage and you move around and you have career. Do you know that one? That one, where are you out? Then I think I can have my health. If I want the wealth and the influence that God's promised me, he's not going to send me out there to go die on the plane and die uh, on stage, be all out of breath. And... <laughs> no. All right. Look, have to be fit for Holy Ghost. Come on now. All right. So that was number two. All right. Look, we make a good time. We about halfway there. Okay. And um, let me give you some scripture really quickly. Uh, so James, uh, James 2, 17 and 20, New King, King James Version. Uh, Thus also faith by itself, it does not have work. If it does not have works, it's dead. But someone will say, 
You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? So of course we all know that faith without works is dead, right? We know this. So some of us have been professing, proclaiming, prophesying, declaring and decreeing and ain't putting out a lick of work behind that faith, okay? So, all right, <clears throat> let me move on. So, and, and again, for those of you who are just now joining us, we're talking about the supernatural entrepreneur. This is my book, but, um, and it has five biblical principles to help you build your business with God. And I believe that we have to make sure that we are operating foundationally in these principles for God to really, for us to really see the transition. No, for us to benefit from the transition that's happening. Because you ain't got to see the transition. All y'all going to see the transition. We are going to see the season shift. And God wants to raise up those that are going to, that have thick skin and that are going to be a guiding light. Okay. That are going to be a guiding light. All right. I haven't said number three. I've been talking. <laughs> I've been talking. So number three is provision versus prosperity. Whew. Okay. Provision versus prosperity. So let's, let's talk about this, right? Did y'all know that there's a difference between provision and a difference between prosperity? I'm gonna tell y'all a quick story. Um, I used to always be praying for provision. I used to be like, God provide, God gonna provide. God gonna provide, God gonna provide, the Lord will provide. God, can you just please provide? Give me the provision. If God gave you the vision, he can give you the provision. Provide, provide, provide. Mm -hmm. So what I'm really, all right, let me take a few steps back because I want I want to walk this with you guys, okay? I'm called to be a wealthy person, a kingdom financer. You're called to be a kingdom financer, a wealthy person. That's why you are, you guys are on here, right? So how, if you are just asking for God to provide for provision, that does not lend itself to prosperity. Y'all provision is guaranteed. Provision is just enough. Provision is enough to get you started. Provision is sustaining grace. Provision is is making sure you eat at night and that you got a house. But prosperity is wealth beyond measure. Prosperity has overflow. Prosperity never runs out. Prosperity is generational. Provision is not generational. So many of us are asking for God to provide and are, are expecting prosperity out of provision. And so we are praying these prayers God provide. God help me just get enough money to pay my bills. God help me get enough money so I can do this. No, God is saying, I want to be the God of prosperity over your life. And let me tell you a secret. Did you guys know that provision is guaranteed? He promised that he would be Jehovah Jireh for you. So you don't have to beg him. You do not have to beg him for you to have a place to live. You don't have to beg him for for you to have something to eat. You don't have to beg him for you to have the basic things for you to do your job. And so today, if we are going to be the kingdom finances and influences of the world of the nation, we have to move beyond. We have to move beyond asking God simply to provide. We're past that. Can I just put in the comments? I'm past that. I I'm, I'm past. Just God just providing. I, I want you to understand that your provision is, is, is it's guaranteed. And so in John 14 and 13, it says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. And Matthew 6, 31, it says, so don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? The Lord even instructs us. Don't be, don't be worrying about what you're going to eat. What you're going to drink. What you're going to, what you're going to wear. Right. And, 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 and we see this, we see this example. Um, we see this example biblically, right? We see this example biblically 
when God um, told the Israelites as they were journeying, uh, when they were like, we hungry. And he was like, okay, I'm going to give you manna and quail. Right. And he said, I'm only going to give you just enough. He said, don't be trying to save. Don't be trying to save my provision. It's just for today. Provision is just for today. Provision was never meant to be generational. <laughs> no, Katie, I wasn't in the living room with you. <laughs> provision is not generational. And so I want to shift your mindset to that of one of prosperity. Okay. Because we have to remember that it is the Lord, our God, for it is he who gives us the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So I want to tell you, so, okay, just, just hear me out. Okay. So now what, how we get to prosperity then you're going to have to work for it. Provision you ain't got to work for. So you can just be as lazy as you want, as trifling as you want. As long as you love the Lord, you're going to eat. You're going to have somewhere to eat. You're going to have somewhere to live. You're going to be straight. As long as you love the Lord, you live it right, you're going to be straight. So you, some of you, you're you going to have just enough. You're trying to figure out, well, why am I having just enough? Why do I have no money left over? Why, why am I only getting just? Because that's all you're asking him for. You're up there praying for manna and quail. And then what happens, remember faith and feelings, it goes back to your faith, your faith, uh, your faith matters, your feelings don't, right? Where well, you have to conquer your feelings. So then you start saying, God, okay, God, I want, I want to meet, I want, I want a seven figure company, I want an eight figure company. I want to be a, the first millionaire in my family. I want, I want to own a skyscraper. I want to, I want to give uh, a million dollar time. You start praying these prosperity prayers and God who gives you the power to produce well, right? It's the reason why he put that power word in front of it. Power, power is think something in motion. And I could, I'm a chemical engineer by trade in my book. I got some breakdowns on some equations. So I'm not going to go there with y'all, but power, there is work in power. So that means that you are going to have to have some works to get to that prosperity. Katie, go ahead and throw it. Just don't break it. You're going to have to have some works to get to that prosperity, guys. So I just want to remind you that the vision that God has told you to do, the book that God has told you to write, the business that God has told you to launch, the location that God has told you to expand to, the thing that feels scary, right? The thing that you're trying to figure out what to do, that is in direct alignment with the prosperity that you've been asking God for because there is work attached to it. Now, when I say work, I didn't say it had to be hard work. I didn't say it had to be backbreaking work. I didn't say that you had to toil. I just said that there was some action that has to be connected. Some of you want the prosperity before you did the work. And these are principles. Principle wise, it does not work. And this is why people run to other religions and other practices and talking about they manifesting because they are trying to bypass God's principle. But I'm going to ask you something and I want you to listen and respond. Okay. If you didn't do no work, but you manifested something, right? And it is God who gives power, gives you the power to produce the prosperity. So you got prosperity that you didn't work for because you said you manifested it. Baby, I want to ask you, where did it come from? What's the source? It's going to pop. I want, I want, I want, I want y'all to, I want y'all to let that sit before we start talking about we manifesting and it ain't, and it, and there's, there's, it's not connected to God. So you understand the reason why he says thou shall be no other gods before me, because there are little G's that got some baby power. And they over here grant wishes. But you want to know the difference? They didn't have a savior that came and died for, for, for access to that. So guess what? One day it's going to come for payments and it's going to come for blood. And it may not come for you, but it might come for your kids. It might come for your grandkids. It, it, and some of you, you're trying to figure out what's going on with my life. Why can't I seem to get out of this? There might have been something in your history where there was a, a, an exchange for you. You're the cost. And you're trying to go, God, well, why this ain't working? I don't know. Great granddaddy, great, great grandmama. Maybe unbeknownst to them. And it's showing up for you. 
but we have power and authority through the blood of Jesus. And actually, I'm going to pray that. I'm going to pray that because I feel led. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just come into agreement with God with who you say that we are. Father God, we repent right now in the name of Jesus for any covenants that were made with any other gods by ourselves unknowingly and even going back to four generations. We break every demonic covenant, covenant that was made uh, for, for access or for interest into something that you did not design for us. Lord, I ask right now that you clean the slate, that you clear the slate right now for us in the name of Jesus so that we can now walk in the power and the authority without having the weight of an ungodly covenant attached to our purpose. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Sometimes you got to look. Sometimes if it get in your spirit, you got to break it off. You got to break it off, Chad. Because one thing I realized, some of y'all are walking in and the, the, the payback of the other God that somebody in your bloodline sacrificed to. Somebody's saying, somebody right now talking about ain't that deep. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Other gods have power. That is why you better be careful on whoever coaches uh program you getting into time they manifest in five ways to manifest your dream client baby you better ask where is the manifestation coming from what source and if they cannot point back to the blood of jesus the because it, even if you you can't y'all know you can't skip over jesus because you don't even have access to god so if i need y'all to check who you listening to if they never utter jesus and they talking about god baby you better ask what god they talking about because we only have access to our father by way of the blood of jesus and if you try to skip that you in dangerous territory and it seems subtle because you get on social media and folks talking about God, God, God is my everything. God, 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 they never uttered Jesus. Start listening. Just saying, all right, look, I got like 10 more minutes. I got to hurry up. <laughs> okay, so I'm on point number four, right? I'm on point number four. So uh, there are poverty products and there are prosperity products. Look, y'all, I done got hot. I don't know about y'all, but when I feel the presence of God, I start getting hot. I got to, open up a, uh, I got to turn on the fan. I got hot, child. We got to open this door up. I'm over here sweating. All right. So, okay, so we're on the next point. Um, there are poverty products and prosperity products. Okay. Right. And you got to know the difference. Okay. There are poverty products and there are prosperity products and you got to know the difference. So let's, let's bring that down. Poverty products, right. Are products that you started in fear that you did it scared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Poverty products are products that were only meant to last for a short period of time. So maybe God gave you to go ahead to create something, to launch something, and it was never intended for you to keep doing it. It was just to get you started. It was only the, it was only the beginning. It was not your end all be all. It was not supposed to be your savior. But then there are prosperity products, again, that are things that are supposed to be longstanding and generational. So I'm, I'm about to tell you the difference. Anybody want to know? Uh, I'm about to give you a few points. All these are in my book. You can get my book off Amazon. How you can tell if you sell a poverty product. And, I, and I'm about to help somebody because some of you were trying to figure out like why your product isn't selling anymore or why it worked at first or or why it's not a prospect or why all the clients connected to it are getting on your nerves. <laughs> why are you struggling to, to okay, yeah, y'all got, y'all got the point, right? So, all right. So uh, I'm about to just run down a list. The first point, how to tell if you sell a poverty product, you launched it or you created it in fear, okay? That means, God, I need to pay my rent. Ooh, 
Let me see if I can go create this t-shirt line and sell these t-shirts so I can get $500 to pay my rent. Oh, it gave me $500. Maybe I should start a t-shirt company. Wrong, 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 wrong. Just because it got you out of one thing doesn't mean it was supposed to keep, keep getting you out of stuff, right? So that brings me to my second point. You did not pray about it. You did not pray about it or, or you prayed about what you wanted instead of asking, asking what God desired. So you started an XYZ t-shirt line to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, to pay some bill. And then you just decided that because it worked one time that it was going to keep on working. And you did not go back to God and say, God, am I really supposed to start a t-shirt business? Maybe God said, you know what? I'm going to give, I'm going to give Katie, I'm going to mess with Katie. I'm going to give Katie just, I'm going to let her sell them t-shirts. My daughter, she asked, she asked for, 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 uh, uh, uh. Uh, some fish. She asked for something. I'm going to let her, I'm going to give her this. All right. Then you just keep on going. All right. So let me get to the next point. How to tell if you got a, a poverty product. Uh, Y'all listen. <clears throat> you took the idea from someone else. You saw someone selling something and you were inspired or AKA you copied and you attempted to make it original. That's not none of y'all, but you were like, Ooh, I like, I like her journal. I'm going to make me a God bless the scribe journal. Cause I, I can make that. I like how she said, yeah. Ooh. I like, I like how Liz is doing PR. I feel like I could do PR. I'm going I'm to I'm get on e, uh, Lindsay's email list and get all her emails and uh, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on her email list and I'm, I'm going to copy all her emails because if, if Lindsay can do it, I can do it too. You know, I'm going to start uh, beyond the book uh, 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 consulting. I'm gonna have people publish books, but it's not beyond the book media. You know, Chanel don't own me. Yeah, you, y'all, we do that, and sometimes we do that, and we don't even realize we're doing that. That's why you got to subject all things into prayer because you were inspired, and it went into your subconscious, and now you are a carbon copy, and you don't got the anointing or the oil to even sustain the warfare that's connected to that. That's what somebody told me. They were like. Chanel, don't worry about people copying it because people can copy and they're going to get the warfare, but they don't got the, they don't got the support that you got. All right. The next thing is you're experiencing just enough or not enough revenue each month. You are barely covering your expenses and your revenue is not growing. Y'all, this typically happens when you are underpricing. So maybe God, maybe God intended you to have a luxury service and you keep lowering your price. You keep um, uh, selling stuff that you know you ain't got no business selling. You keep trying to just, uh, I just need a client. I just need a client. They talked about that last night on the high seats. Oh, well, I just want a client. Let me just see. I give, I give you 50% off. I give you 20. I give you. And then now you ain't made not nail money. Poverty product. Um. Let's see. What else was there? <clears throat> oh, this is good. This is good. Your health is suffering. You are physically and mentally unable to produce the product or service in excellence because of frequent health issues. I just stepped on somebody's toes right now. You trying to figure out why you keep getting attacked in your health. Uh, uh, mm -mm -mm. Does, could it be that you selling the wrong things? Could it be that the season that you're in, it no longer works for you. It no longer, it no longer serves you. You don't have the capacity. You need to move on. What we're doing, when I was um, praying about what to do with Beyond the Book Media and with everything that God called me to do and how I wanted to make sure I showed up in excellence in Kingdom Business Network and her beauty regimen, all the things, right? Uh, a wise mentor told me, Chanel, you need to lower your volume by raising your prices. You cannot serve as many people that you've been serving. It's affecting your health. You're stressed out. It's only one, you know. So I was like, oh, prices had to go up. Um, the next thing how you can sell if you're start if you if you have a poverty product, um, huh, you have multiple customer complaints. 
y'all them them customers mad they they mad they mad and when i say most i'm not talking about a few i'm talking about 75 uh, percent of your customers mad and you on facebook mad at people telling me i ain't never serving church people and no, i didn't say complaining all about your customers could it be that you attracted the wrong customers because you're selling the wrong product and you're only selling that product because you're trying to meet an immediate need. And it was only for a certain season. You've outgrown those people. I start getting a bunch of customer complaints or people start complaining. I start looking in relief. Maybe I can't even provide this type of service at this level, at this price anymore. All right. Uh, another way to determine if you're selling a poverty product is uh, you are, you, uh, well, I said this already, but you are attempting to meet an urgent need. So you just like, oh, let me just come up with this. I'm guilty of this. Let me just come up with this VIP day. <laughs> I I need like, I need $2,500. All right. I'm about to put out something. Tell me, can I get this VIP day? Let me put this email out. Let me see. And there's a difference between doing that so that you can invest, doing that so that you can, um, further yourself, but doing that just so you can go do God's job of handling your provision. Now, nah, remember provision is already guaranteed. God, God promised you. You could be trifling and lazy and still gonna have somewhere to eat, <laughs> somewhere to sleep. As long as you are, as long as you are a child of God, it may not be. I didn't say you was gonna be living nice. I didn't say you was gonna be eating steak, but you gonna have something to eat, something to drink, something to sleep, something on your body, right? All right. <laughs> um. Next is okay. You are undervaluing and, and pricing your products and services, so you 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 shooting low. You know God told you to charge this, but you keep going down because you begging for clients. I'm going to tell you, many of us do that because we don't want to go through the uncomfortable season of actually seeing it through. Okay? We don't want to go through the uncomfortable season of seeing it through. That'd be our problem. God be like, okay, I want you to raise. Let's say you sell us something for $20. God say, okay, it need to be 50 And then you put it out at 50 and the first week ain't nobody buy. And you're like, oh my goodness, I heard God wrong. Put it back down to 20 because I got to pay something. And you won't let, you won't let things fall apart so God can build it back up again. I promise you, if you can weather and you're going to learn you some long suffering, you can weather that uncomfortable season of trusting God that if God said it's $50, then it's $50 or else you're going to keep being in the same rat race over and over and over. Okay. All right, so we're almost done with this. How to tell if you got a poverty product. You rush through the production and selling process. That means it was last minute. You just rushed. You just put through something together just for the sake of you didn't take your time. You didn't make sure it was right. You didn't check everything. And then the last thing I had, huh, this listen, this is how you know you're selling a poverty product. You had to lie, steal, cheat, or mislead someone into purchasing from you. We see a lot of that type of stuff, foolishness going on. People out here lying, stealing folks stuff, copying, cheating. Okay. So we have to move towards away from selling poverty products. Now, what I... What I want you to understand, I don't want you to feel bad because I you you realize that you you had a poverty product, and that's okay. Because I do believe that in some cases God will allow you to meet an immediate need. Okay, but I want to just run through quickly how you can tell if you are selling a prosperity product, real quick. Let me just run through that, okay? Because you might be good. All right. So I'm gonna go through it quickly. Number one, the idea just landed on your lap. You was minding your business and then Holy Spirit said, bam, here you go. You wasn't even looking for it. You weren't struggling. You weren't stressed. There was no strain. It was a still small voice. Mm -hmm. The resources show up when you need them. Mm -hmm. It's a prosperity product. The, they are appropriately priced and valued. Prosperity product. They position you for growth month over month. Prosperity product. Ah, here's another one. 
They help others create wealth or transform an area of their life. Prosperity product. It is an original idea that was not inspired by someone other than Holy Spirit. Prosperity product. It took faith to create it and favor showed up throughout the process. My God, prosperity product. Are y'all catching my drift? Although you had to work your faith, there was no toil in its creation. So there's a difference between working your faith and toiling. And then the last point I have on how to tell if you have a uh, prosperity product, it was created with the future in mind. So it wasn't created to meet your initial need right now. It was created for you to have longevity. All right. So that was that principle. We, we, we look, I'm trying to hurry up and get y'all out of here. <laughs> um, so you guys can get these principles. So that was, oh, look, that was the fourth principle. We got one more principle. And for those of you, if you're just now joining us, we are talking about the supernatural entrepreneur, five biblical principles to build your business with God. This is, all these concepts are coming out of our book. I believe that this book was written for such a time as this because of what God is doing. He needs us to understand his principles so that we can tap into his abundance, his favor, so that he can position you for the influence and the wealth that you have. And also uh, we're doing this because we have a mentorship program that is going to help you walk through all of those things. And um, it's called the master's mind. I'll tell you more about that at the end. Okay. You can get the book on Amazon and all the principles are in the book. I think the book, my book is only $15 on Amazon. Y'all can go get it. Like if you missed it, but yes. All right. So here is, um, uh, point principle number five, you won't grow if you don't. sow. y'all, this goes without saying, okay. Um, Basically, if we, we've talked about this, but how you go, how you gonna charge premium prices if you've never invested at a premium? How you want people to join your mentorship program, your coaching program, if you've never invested in a coaching program or a mentorship program, right? How are you wanting to great reap a harvest in a place that you ain't got no seed in the ground? How are you asking God to show up and bless and you don't tithe or sow or give or do anything? How do you want people to help support you and you don't support anybody else, right? Right, so sowing and investing that is the supernatural fast track to success. You can bypass years of stress, struggle, and strain just by sowing and investing. It's like a if I could if I could describe it, y'all. If I could describe it, it's like it's like a portal. It's like it's like a it's like a a, a transporting you from one place to the next. Y'all follow me. It, it is, it is the cheat code. You could be not the smartest toolbox, tool in the toolbox. You can have the least amount of money, but if you sow, if you invest, you have now put yourself to the front of the line. Yeah, it, it's the same principle happens in the world. What happened if you pay the extra money for VIP? What you get to do? Somebody tell me, look, can I say that? If you, if you, if you, if you trying to, if you trying to, uh, skip the line, right. And you pay, you invest at a high level. You get to skip the line. You get to go in first. All right. So <laughs> if you don't, if you, you won't grow if you don't sell. So you cannot be stingy and ask God to bless you. Well, you can ask him. But you don't got no seed in the ground. Y'all, God is a God of principle. And some of us are asking for things outside of God's principle, right? And he definitely honors his principle of sowing. He definitely honors his principle of investing. So let's say you are struggling. You're like, man, I'm really struggling in my business. God, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? 
Many of you believe that God's help, or many of us, let me put us, many of us believe that when we pray for God and we ask God to help us in our business, that means God's going to send us an influx of customers and all of a sudden God's going to blow on us and boom, 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 body being bam, we great. But that's typically not how God works. God will send a program like the master's mind, like our, our mentorship cohort. He will send a program. He will send a mentor. He will send a coach. He will send a training. He will send a book. He will send a resource where you have to put something in the ground in order for you to obtain access to it. Why? Because there are going to be lessons along the way. So a lot of us are asking God for something that we don't really fully understand or we can't even fully grasp what we're asking. We just understand the surface. So God will send you a mentor. He will send you a coach. He will send you a program. He will send you a course so that you can get the full concept of what you're asking for. So you, in exchange for you giving your money, you get access to the wisdom and the resources. I think sometimes as people of faith, and I'm not talking to any of you guys on here, but anytime people start asking about money, even though we can, we hold entrepreneurs, we hold business people. But as soon as someone says anything about paying for something, about money, we start, we start sweating, we start leaving, we start getting frustrated, we start getting annoyed. And it's just like, how are you going to operate from that mindset? And you want people to, to, to patronize your business, to sow into you, to give to you, and you are afraid of doing it and reciprocating it. And so we have to be the biggest and the best givers. We have to be the first ones to invest. Do you understand that is why God is positioning many of you for wealth? Because you are going to be the kingdom's investor. But if you're stingy now, if he says, hey, join TMM, join the master's mind, or hey, invest in, in this program, or hey, I need you to get this building. Look, I said, get this building for somebody. That's for somebody. If he tells you, we can't, some of you ain't even, some of you ain't even at the building yet. I'm, I'm going to take a step down. You won't even give or connect or join or sow into something on this level, but you're asking God to bless you at such a higher investment level. And you can't, you won't even have the faith, right? So I'm going to tell you, if God is saying to you, hey, I want you to start tithing regularly, giving 10% regularly to your church, okay? Some of you been doing it. Bam, that's not a problem. All right, I want you to start going a little bit above and beyond tithe. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, God. I got this, I got this, I got this. I don't think I can afford it. And maybe the math ain't mathing. Okay, maybe on paper, you don't see how you are going to go above and beyond, but God told you. How in the world do you think you're going to have the faith when God says, hey, I need you to go, I need you to go buy that office building. If you don't have the faith to continue to sow and give back to God, if you don't have the faith to invest in programs, how are you going to have the faith to go acquire the building, to go build out the team? As soon as that landlord or, or, the, or, or as soon as the, the owner put them papers down in front of you and you see $14,000 a month rent. Tell me like 14,000. How much you think commercial real estate costs? When you see a $20,000 a month lease, when you see the building that God told you to get is 2.5 million. So for some of you, God is training you on how to be an investor by having you invest in yourself first. By joining programs, by making sure you are tithing, right? You need to be doing all this. Don't join no program if you ain't tithing. I'm just going to say that. You need to be tithing first consistently, sowing back minimum 10%. Then you can join your program so that the fruit of the of your la of your efforts <laughs> can be multiplied because we are in the manage to multiply, okay? I'm telling you, by regularly giving, you are about to, for some of you, if you have not, just by deciding, and even if you cannot, let's say you absolutely can't do 10%, it just, it's just not feasible. Pick a, pick a percentage, pick a number, and say, every week I'm going to give this. Every month I'm going to give this. If you have a coaching program or any kind of program and you ain't never invested in the coaching program, I need you to A, B, C, D, F, G right now, go <laughs> join the master's mind.
Okay. I just need you guys to understand it is so serious. This is serious. So, um, I just want to give you a few scripture, uh, second Corinthians nine and six. Remember this, a farmer who only plants a few seeds will get a small crop. So, I mean, I get it. You know, Lord, I got the faith of a mustard seed. All I got is $10. God, give me a million. It don't work that way. I'm trying to tell you, sorry to break that news to you, but I did a whole training on God math uh, on KVN's YouTube channel. I, I admonish you to go watch it. It was really good. It shows how you can get to get to giving at that level. As you continue to increase, you start increasing as well. Um, and then Genesis 26 and 12, when Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted for the Lord blessed him. So Isaac was able to get a hundredfold return on what he sold because he sold it unto God. And for some of you investing in sowing just by, just by sowing into yourself, investing in joining either the master's mind, regularly tithing, you're going to see a hundredfold return. Your 10% is about to get multiplied to a hundred percent return. And so I want to uh, challenge you that before the end of the week, that you identify where you can sow into your business, where you can invest into your business. If you are, I'm going to tell you what I would rather do. If somebody were to ask me, hey, Chanel, if someone were to say, hey, hey, Chanel, how, how, how would I, how could I get, I need $5,000, right? And I'm saying, well, how much money you got? They say five. I'm going to say go sell the $5 because you can't do nothing with the $5 anyway. Might as well make it holy. Go find somebody to sow into. Yep. I'm going to like you can't. Some of you are holding on to money. You can't do nothing anyway. You might as well give it to God. You might as well make it holy. You might as well invest it. Okay. I need 5000 I got $50. Okay, go find a $50 course. They can teach you how to make $5,000. But, but, but no. And then go do the work. Go ahead and just make it holy. So that was the fifth principle. I got a bonus principle um, that I just want to share. You guys are called to be trailblazers. And trailblazing is for the future. So some of you, what you do and what you produce, you won't even see it in your lifetime. And that's great. It's for your children's children. You trailblaze for your grandchildren. You trailblaze for, for the, the generation after the next. And where many of us mess up, I always talk about this entrepreneurship is for the future. Where many of us mess up, we're trying to use entrepreneurship, which is a wealth creation. I'm not talking about small business. I'm talking about the, the name. When you call yourself an entrepreneur, you are saying that you are a wealth producer for generations to come. Entrepreneurship is not hustling. You're not, you're not, you're not a, you're not an entrepreneur if you're hustling. Entrepreneurship is for the future. Entrepreneurs create businesses and create legacy and have wealth that lasts beyond their years. And so I just gave y'all uh, five principles really quickly. You can grab all of these in the Supernatural Entrepreneur. I also wanted to tell you if you love this, um, and I'm, I'm going to open up for questions. If you have any questions, you can drop your questions in the chat. If there's anything, I got a few minutes and I can answer your questions. But um, the main reason I wanted to do this is so we can have a course correction so we can get back in alignment. Because let me tell you something, any means trying to wear many of you out and you are forgetting what God said. And I want to tell you guys about the master's mind. Um, it is a six month mentorship program that myself and pastor Chandler are leading and we are teaching you how to show up. Uh, yeah. Oh, KBN. Yes. So I'm going to drop some, um, uh, <laughs> I want to, uh, I want to drop, we're going to drop a few links in the chat. So the first link I'm going to drop is, I'm going to um, send you to, uh, let's see, kbn.club. 
I'm about to give y'all a few things so that you can check out. So first of all, we have a business mentorship coaching program. If you've already been looking for something, you might as well just go ahead and come on over here to us. We've been doing this for three years. Uh, I believe registration is open through the weekend. So I wanted to drop this in the chat. And like I said, if you have questions, um, why is it not letting me, I'm trying to, y'all excuse me. I don't know why it is not letting me. Here we go. There we go. I was trying to, okay. So this is TMM, the master's mind. Take a look at it. And if you have questions, um, you can fill out a form. This is open through the weekend. We've been promoting this all week. Um, and then also let me, here is kbn.club. Uh-oh. KBN. KBN stands for Kingdom Business Network Club. Uh, go ahead and check us out over there. Get on our mailing list because we do a lot of cool things. But if you like this type of style of what we, this is more, uh, more, you get this in the master's mind <laughs> in a mentorship program. So I wanted to do that. And then, um, so do both go to kbn.club slash TMM and then go to, uh, kbn.club just in general and get on our list, do both of them because we do prior. We had prayer, uh, this morning at 6 a.m., um, we have prayer on Wednesdays. We do a whole host of things. We are a ministry specifically geared towards uh, Christian entrepreneurs of faith. And let me see if I can find this book online. If you guys are interested, you can get it off Amazon. Any questions? You are so welcome. Okay, I have a question while I'm waiting for questions. Give me one nugget. Give me one nugget in the comments um, that you're going to leave with. I'm just curious. I always like to do that because I want to see how effective we are in this and if this is something we should keep doing let's see 30 days of consistency i love that i'm dropping my link right here anybody else want to share oh that's a super long link i feel like they got a better link than that mm. yeah i don't know Okay, so <laughs> provision versus prosperity. You it really hit home. Listen, I know, I know. Provision versus prosperity. Oh, anybody else want to share before I pray us out? Find something hard to do and do it for thirty days. Identifying the prosperity and property products. Look, I pray that this has just blessed you. Don't do anything in fear. Like I'm trying to look at the comments and I thank y'all for coming in on your lunch break. Let's see. Everything was great. You needed it all. Lower, lower your volume and increase your prices. Absolutely. You just joined TMM. <laughs> Or you just joined, what'd you just join, Sarah? I can't tell what you joined. Let me know in the comments. Ah! Hey, come on, come on. We start on Monday. We start on Monday. Come on. Listen, come on. Pray. We're just going to bless God. Um, Again, y'all don't have to do this by yourself. Anybody else? You missed the portion. Will the replay be available? It is the replay is is up in our Facebook group. Uh, let me drop the link to our Facebook group. Let's see if I can find it, y'all. I'm gonna pray for y'all, so don't leave yet. I still got to pray for y'all. We did, we did, we, did, we covered a lot of ground. We didn't, we didn't got out of agreement with them. We didn't broken covenants. We didn't broken the spirit of fear. We oh, thank you so much, Pastor Chandler, for sharing that. Uh, you didn't realize God will send a program or a train. Uh, yes, Katie, he will send a program or a training. Why does he break? Okay, Katie, let me talk to you real quick. So if I, I don't know where it is in the Bible, but it talks about Solomon. King Solomon was a wise man, right? And he was the wealthiest man. And it says in there that kings travel from all over the world to sit at his feet for wisdom. And they had the same guy. So why did they have to travel to go sit at the feet of King Solomon? So I just wanted to say that like he, God raises up wise people 
because part of their calling is to be able to break things down. I myself have, have coaches and mentors. You don't have Facebook? Oh, Markeisha. Well, make sure you follow this on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we, I don't know if we're going to email this out. Okay, good. We might end up emailing. If we can get somebody to email it out. Um, all right. I think we... I think we could. You said, but you want to join the coaching? Markeisha, you don't have to... Um, here, I'm about to send you the link. Look, I'm trying. Oh, there you go. You can join TMM. Yeah, so in TMM, that's not on Facebook. Just so you're clear, our, our, our mentorship program is not on Facebook. We, you don't even have to be on Facebook to be in our program. We have our own private community off Facebook, and we do everything in um in our band. So I, I see you, Simone. I'm going to pray for you. You said when, Sarah, you said when I said, when I said you listening to all these coaches, they say God, but never say Jesus. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell y'all it's real sneaky. It's real subtle. And they over there telling you to do stuff. And thank you, Marina. All right. I'm going to go ahead. If anybody else has any questions, drop them. I will answer them. I want to make sure I pray for Simone. Y'all, can we pray for Simone really quick and just come into agreement? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up your daughter, Simone, Lord, as she's going through a difficult time. Lord, I thank you just for um, how you've covered her and you have protected her in this season of hardship, Lord. I thank you, Father, that breakthrough is, is, is literally on her back. I thank you, Father, that you will even begin to speak to her and her family concerning um, what their next moves are. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that um that there are resources that are made available to her. I thank you, Father, for everything that you have um given to your daughter Simone and how you will continuously keep her and her family throughout this tough time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Simone, I have a question. Are you um are you going like are you on online school? Are you going to school? Just curious. Um, I'm attending school physically. I'm in my clinical phases. Okay. Does your school, like, what school, does your school have, like, student housing or anything like that? Um, no, it's actually not that type of school. It's not okay. like a university or anything like that. Okay. Okay. I understand. So, I was, what, what I was, I was just wondering what I was seeing. I just was, was, I don't know if you can go to your financial aid. Um, and to your, your, I don't, or if you can go and talk to someone who does like financial aid, uh, and see if they have like any other financial aid or some sort of money that's available. Um, I just, I just want to have that conversation with admissions and see if there's a grant or something that's available. I feel like some, I, I'm going to be honest. I was praying and I was like, there's like some sort of money that's available for you. You just got to go ask for it. So I just wanted to. Thank you. You're welcome. Please keep me updated if, if, if you know, we just going to trust God. Katie said, when you were talking about the t-shirts, I actually was wanting to do that, write down different things, put them on t-shirts. But yes, please ask God, Katie. Go ask him. Because what if he got something else for you? Just spend all that energy, all that money, all that investment for God to be like, nope. I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, before you buy the cricket machine, <laughs> before you invest all that money. <laughs> go ahead and ask God all right let me pray let me pray us out um father God in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I thank you just for these biblical principles um that we were reminded of today Lord may they uh promote us to action we thank you uh just for the authority the power and the ability to build businesses with you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed so that we can get into have sonship. So as sons and daughters, by way of the blood of Jesus, we have access and we are heir to Abraham, the wealthiest man. So we have an inheritance that is stored up for us. So Lord, we are asking that any area, any blockages of our inheritance, Lord, may it be released unto us right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for 
Father, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, that you have called us to be kingdom finances and kingdom influence where the wealth of the wicked will go to the righteous ones. Lord, I thank you that you are helping us to get out of our feelings and to have the faith to do the work to move us from poverty to um prosperity to move us from provision to prosperity. I thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, but you are also the God that gives us the ability to move beyond just provision, the God of overflow, the God of exceedingly and abundantly. And Lord, I thank you that for those of us that are called to our exceedingly and abundantly season, Lord, that you will release the strategy, that you will show them the coaches, the mentors, the programs, the trainings, that they will have access to what that what it is that you need for them to have access to, Lord, and that they will have the faith to move. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person that is joining the Master's Mind, that this next six months will be transformative, that as they step into media, that they will grow in every area. I thank you for future influencers, Lord. I thank you for future decision makers. I thank you for those of us that you are putting us in positions of power so that we can, that we can be a safe haven for what's to come. I thank you, Lord, that there is wealth coming to us and that we have a Joseph anointing for you have called us to be the Josephs of our family and our generation, that our business isn't just for us. Our business is for generations to come. I thank you that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children, his children. And Lord, I thank you that we are ones that will leave an inheritance. Lord, I I even pray for debt freedom right now in the name of Jesus for every person that has given and 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 and, and, and every person that is in some sort of debt um, that it be released right now by the power and authority given to me by the blood of Jesus I ask that you break the spirit of of lack and the spirit of debt uh, so that they will no longer be slaves to the lender, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and that we can be lorded by you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just repent for any time that we got into debt um, um, and uh, based on our ignorance, based on sin, based on our, our uh, wrong motives, Lord. And so, Lord, we just ask that the slate be made clean so that we can start again, refresh and renew us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, guys. Well, thank y'all so much for spending your Friday with me. Uh, I'll see some of y'all on Monday in TMM. If you join, we drop the link. And we are so, 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 I'm so eternally grateful um, for you guys. And uh, I don't know what I pressed. Y'all, I pressed the button and I don't know what the heck just happened. There we go. I'm back. I pressed the button trying to save the chat. <laughs> I thank you guys. For everything. And um, I pray that you guys have a great day. Bye bye.